data is king. In the modern day era, many companies have made millions using and selling data. However you look at it, learning how to extract data from one place and use it in another is a valuable skill. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five skills that I believe are essential for modern day web scraping. And although I use Python, many of these skills aren't related to that uh, and it can be applied to any language. When we send our HTTP request to the server and ask for the information, the response that we get back will be of a certain type that we need to work with accordingly. If the website is pure HTML or enough of it is, we can just use the text version of the object, which is shown here using r.text. This is what we want to pass on to our HTML parser. However, if we are working with an API or the API endpoint of a website, it's almost always going to be JSON, which we are using getting the r.json response, and we can manipulate it just like a dictionary and list within Python. The other type that you might need is r.content, which is the byte representation, which is best for when you're working with a file like an image or a PDF. Our HTTP requests all come with a header. Now this provides the server with some information so it can formulate a response. Using our code, we can specify which headers that we want to send, or more importantly, we can change them to make the server believe something that we want it to believe. The most common header that you're going to want to change is the user agent. And now this tells the server a bit about the client, which is us, and who is making the request. We can change the user agent to tell the website that we are a common browser on a normal operating system them rather than some code. This is a good way to try and avoid any low level blocking of automated scraping systems as by default Python requests will identify itself as such which provides a simple way for sites to block our request. Headers are sent as a dictionary along with the request. Fill them out like this and add to the request string here. Other bits of important information like cookie data are generally sent separately but are done in the same manner. If you're interested or stuck and want to see what headers your normal browser is sending check your requests in the inspect element tool of the network network tab and put it into an API program like Postman or Insomnia. It will actually split out the request headers for you so you can play around with them and see what does what and you can also copy them out if you need to. More data means more requests needed and the idea that we want to start speeding up the request to the server. However, the quicker we send them in, the quicker it is that we're likely to be identified and have our IP blocked from that website. The main way around this is to use proxies. A proxy sits in the middle of our connection, takes our data and then forwards the request on and then receives the data back from the server and sends it back to us. This is important for scraping as using multiple proxies or a rotating proxy will allow us to make multiple requests really quickly to the server basically by using multiple IP addresses therefore less chances of getting banned and if you do get one of the IPs banned you're on a proxy anyway so you'll just find the next one down the line there are three main types of proxy there's data center residential and rotating and the good ones cost money the best ones are residential as these are generally not blocked by the big websites whereas almost all free proxies have been used and abused are blocked by Google and are unusable for what we want to do proxies are however invaluable for scraping at scale but if if it's a personal project, I'd just suck up the extra time and scrape slower if at all possible. This is generally my first port of call when finding out what the best way to scrape a site is. It's got a whole host of information that will help us decide what we need to do to get the data. It shows exactly what our browser is asking for and where it's going and the type of the response and the size. This is where you'll find if you can access the API endpoint and get the JSON data directly from the server that the browser is requesting. This negates the need for any complicated or time consuming HTML passing. Go here first, reload the page and see what's going on. So this is the last resort, but sometimes it is the only option. Uh, the downside that it's slow and it's not foolproof Headless browsers like Splash and Puppeteer do help reduce the overhead and speed things up a bit, but it's still a browser being loaded up to get the page data. If you need to do this, I'd recommend request HTML package first, as its render function is simple and reasonably quick, allowing for minimal extra fuss when writing your code and allowing you to render each page as you go. Splash is a more advanced option and it provides a comprehensive API and LUA scripting for much more customization. The other option is loading a full browser and using something like selenium but that's just not what it's designed for and while it does work it's clunky and unreliable for any meaningful web scraping it should really be avoided unless you absolutely have to and it should be used for what it's designed for which is testing websites one more before i go and that's always check the source code. It does sometimes get overlooked, especially when you just go straight into the inspect element and start looking through what elements you can use to get out the data. But this only shows you the DOM, which is what our browser has interpreted. 
and it isn't an accurate representation of what our code is actually seeing when we make our simple request. However, more often than you might think, the data is in there somewhere, it's just not in the same place that you'd expect it to, it's hidden in a script tag, but we can actually still get that out by passing it through our HTML parser or something similar, so it's always worth looking in there first. What I tend to do is copy out a specific part of the text uh, on the website, like maybe the name of a product or the, the price or something, and then search for it in the view source and see what comes up. So now that you've got these tips, go ahead and check out this video to see me run through a more complete web scraping project with a code run through so you've got a better understanding of how it all works.